Let's just keep it rolling, fella. Let's keep it rolling. Your next fight is an amateur featherweight fight. Three by three minute rounds. Introducing first, Mitch Ferdy. And here we have Mitch Ferdy from Tribal MMA walking out to one of the one of my really fan, my favorite training songs, Balls on Parade as well. I'm not sure if he was even born when this song was released, but anyhow. So he's a blue belt in BJJ. He's walked into the cage twice before, not quite being successful, but put on absolute mesmerizing fights. Really, really good matchmaking in that sense. I'm hoping his hand gets raised this time. Yeah, and all the training that I can see, all the uh, social media posts, he spends a lot of time basically with uh, Connor Birch, his sparring partner. So again, if you've got the uh, the best amateur in the country as a training partner, hopefully we see some massive improvements in his game right now. And once again, like this is a complex, complex fight in regards to all the things you have to be aware of and training for. All it comes down is millimeters and timing that you can have a win or a loss. And we've seen some absolute stellar fighters go a long time without having a win, just due to those small complexities of the fight. So I talked to Paul about, Paul Birch is Mitch's coach about Mitch this week. He lost an opponent and he just told me, he's like, we'll find someone because Mitch will find anyone, he doesn't care. He'll just get in there and get amongst it. So credit to both boys taking the taking the fight. Mitch was already in fight camp. His opponent taking it, no hesitations. It's all we love to see in the fight game. Yeah, you know what it's like yourself and as a promoter, there's Back in the day, it used to be pretty much, you know, Black Dragon Kai was the, the gym that you would call for a, a late minute notice fight. Now you can call anyone. Yeah. You know, there's always somebody that's ready. There's always a fighter that's pestering their coach to get that first fight. Listen to that crowd. Did you hear that straight away? Yeah. That crowd just go up another level? The tribal guys always show up in numbers every show. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent, Jake Piper. So credit to him for taking this on such short notice and also coming up a weight division. He actually is actually a bantam weight, but with the short notice, he's taking the fight at featherweight. So that's a that's a real fighter right there. Do, uh, Ryan Dunstan, his coach, just said, he's 18, he's durable, he'll be all right. Send him in there. He's not even here and he's willing to send him in. So that's what we love to see. That's excellent, isn't it? I, I would like to see the stats of the number of times Ignite have fought their tribal. Because they are here at every single show. Absolutely excited to see this one for Jake. So you mentioned you've seen him fight before. What, what are we expecting to see on this fight? Uh, like all the uh, Ignite products, really good wrestling. Always really, all in really good shape. I think he won his last fight by back choke, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what I remember happening. Look at the face on Mitchell Ferdy right now. He is absolutely dialed in. I reckon if I could grow hair, I'd look cool too. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone checked? I think Jake Piper's kicked his dog or he's bloody <laughs> messaging his girlfriend or something. He's got a, uh, a bone to pick right now. He is mean mugging. I'm not sure if he's doing the whole Michael Jordan thing and scratched his own car and said Jake did it. <laughs> but this is the point of around the the mental fight game that comes with it. Like how you prepare yourself, psych yourself up. Do you do it too hard, too fast? Almost following through into his own corner. <laughs> All right, I'm sold. I'm excited. Introducing first in the blue corner. Weighing in at 66.1 kilos. With an amateur record of zero and two, fighting out of tribal MMA!
Mitch Fetty! And his opponent in the red corner, he weighed in at 65.7 kilograms, fighting out of Ignite Martial Arts, holding a record of two wins and one loss. Give it up for Drake Piper! Your referee in charge is Thomas Churchill. So let the violence begin. No, no glove touching parks. gloves. Yes. I actually support that sometimes due to the fact that the number of times I've seen someone throw a cheap shot off that, it's always just best to, to not let it go. And I don't think it's a disrespectful thing as well. You know, it's not, that's your game plan. It's not mine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm in my zone. You can definitely see the little bit of a size advantage against the cage. Mitch Band, a little bit bigger guy, but Jake just looks so strong. <laughs> he just asked the, asked the ref if that was in his ball. <laughs> you should probably know yourself, man. <laughs> Tell you what, though, sportsman's in for Mitch. He allowed, the, uh, he allowed him to wait for the answer. Yeah. I'm not sure about you guys, but I wasn't sure if there was a guilty look from Mitch going, I'm just not going to make eye contact. <laughs> This is the hardest stuff, though. the tussle against the cage, the hardest thing on your cardio by a large mile. And I just want to call out how great the referees are here in Queensland and for XFC. Thomas Churchill saw that Mitch had his hands in the uh, fingers just in the cage, got rid of that straight away. No advantages from that point. Yeah, I, um, I'm a part of the uh, MMAA community, so I, I love the fact that when we see the nominations come through and we get to see who gets assigned, you know, yeah, when you get your, uh, your Phil Cassidy, your Thomas Churchill, your Nikia Melody, yeah. get uh, assigned to the coaches, uh, sorry, the, the, the refs, you know you're in for a good night. Experience, they don't freak out, they just know when to do exactly what's required. Though. Well, the other point to it is you actually don't notice they're in the cage, and oh. that's the best part about it, is they're controlling the fight, letting it go on without actually having to impose themselves. And when uh, was Thomas Churchill is seven foot tall to uh, to not be seen in the caves. <laughs> it's a good effort. <laughs> I'm loving the technicality of this wall work right now. The hand fighting is top notch, especially for amateur fighters. They just they know exactly where they need to be to get the takedown and to stop the takedown. Wow, that was oh, he's pulled it off. Oh, beautiful overhook to start that as well. Mitch has done a great job here. Oh, no. I'm noticing a, a slightly different type of um, professionalism. It's a slightly different type of um, skill. So these guys are completely fighting their own techniques now. They've yeah. got no care in the world on whether or not this is an exciting fight for the crowd or not. But the fact that it's so technical yeah. is exciting. Yeah, this is the skill I use to win this fight. Right. That's right. Oh! Lots of short shots by Mitch there. That's a big, big exchange to finish the round. I even like the uh, knee that Mitch threw, knowing not to throw it to the head, but to throw it to the outside of the body, just to give the referees a look of something else. And in terms of experience in the cage right now, their corners are certainly dialed in. You've got the smiling assassin over there, giving Jake a hell of a lot of commentary. And right now you've got Connor just into, into um, oh gosh, in the Mitch saying, this is what I want you to do. Hand here, hand here, leg there. Get this going. And funnily enough, two corner people have actually fought here. Connor Birch fought, uh, David Martinez. These, what was that? That was probably XFC 30, probably. Many, many years ago. Phenomenal fight when uh, Dave Martinez was still an amateur. That was a great fight too. Connor dropped him. We've never seen that before where Martinez never had a weakness. But uh, again, Martinez was able to stand up and uh, finish the fight. But yeah. And interesting to kind of see how they go on different career paths, hey. You know, Dave ended up, has probably had about six or seven pro fights now. Connor, oh, a bit of action. 
Big Connor's extended, probably had another really. seven amateur fights, but uh, probably looking to go pro now. Oh! Well. Michelin, three big shots. Oh! Of and from that, both of them, I think, have earned each other's respect in terms of striking. This is a pace, though. This. How close are knees tonight? Some of these knees have been uh, fight ending close. They certainly have. And one of the things, like Mitch, Mitch says wants, wants this fight to be high paced. <laughs> He's then violent his punches. I oh, love it. It's the old Mansfield defense. <laughs> Lock those punches with your head. Happened many times at the Mansfield Tavern. Oh, that's good short. Good dirty box inside by Mitch. He's just managing to keep him high enough on his hips to defend the takedown. And we saw we saw Mitch do this well before on having that left overhook. And he threw his leg through and uh, basically got a sweep out of it. But at this stage here, he's trying to suck those hips out and turn the corner on that single leg. This reminds me, completely different type of fight, but reminds me of the Corbin Robertson, Dimitri Fogg fight where Corbin beat him up, but Corbin's back was on the fence. It's the same sort of thing where Mitch is landing significantly more strikes, but his back's on the fence. Oh, well, there's that hip toss. toss. There's that hip toss again. But the entire time Mitch was on his back there, Jake kept trying to snatch. Oh, you know, he's there. Beautiful that reversal. He's got a guillotine. He's got a guillotine um, in there. Oh, he's got that leg over. He's got it perfectly over to. Oh, he gave him the, the other hands. Arm. He's still got it on, doing a great job here. Makes it tough with his back shoulders against the cage. It comes down now. Can, can Jake turn the corner? And has Mitch got enough defense to get out of it? He's got his hand in there from what I can see from here. So at this point That's here, gonna is he going to be That's able to spin? No, oh, is he tapping with the right arm? He's tapping out. Oh, oh my gosh. It. He finds it. Someone almost gets a souvenir. Ooh. Really good. Jake was definitely not winning that fight, but found a way out to get the submission. Really good effort. <laughs> oh, I love him the dancing. He's got this deep Amy Ovich going on. Maybe in a few more years, he might have the bills. Tell you what, just, just that boy. little exchange on the fence where Mitch pulled his arm out and gave him that, gave him the grip under the chin. Those little one percent mistakes you make in the middle of a fight make it really, really tough to swallow a result. When yeah, it was, I think it was just such an action-packed fight where they were constantly stop, not stop moving. Where Mitch almost felt like he had to move yeah. for some reason, and that slight little movement where he gave him that uh, chance to get his arm in. And that's the point, like. Fighters are so well versed across all the uh, disciplines that you really can't rest on your laurels in any sense. That came the from the referee. Huge hit stopped this fight at two minutes twelve in the second round. Your winner by guillotine in the red corner, Jake Piper. What amazing technicality there. And as you mentioned before during the fight, Matt, they didn't care about the crowd. They were fighting their fight and being super technical as a result. They're pretty much next door neighbors at night versus yeah. the tribal. Literally down the road from each other. You do. And training partners. The yeah. amount of times I've seen David Martinez out there at tribal and vice versa. David Martinez, the nicest bloke in the world. Went to put his arm around who he thought was next to us, or it was a ring girl. <laughs> Again, the politest man Jake. in the world. Jake, Jake, my man, my winner. Hiya. Oh, Feeling pretty good about that guillotine, eh? Good success. <laughs> so round two guillotine. He went for a takedown, you flipped it. Was that the plan? The plan was to go to the ground? I don't know, I wasn't too, without trying to sound cocky, I wasn't too concerned about what he had to hit me with. I know I can take a shot, didn't care about being on my back, so gives me the neck, I'll take it. Yeah, well done, mate. Is there anybody you would like to thank for tonight? Um, I'd like to thank my corner, Dave, Koshi, whoever Shay is, I don't know. Um, Ryan Dunstan, 
they're over in Abu Dhabi at the moment representing Australia, Oren Palmley, um, and whoever else is there, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, that's about it. And oh, biggest thanks to Ava and Amy Brocky. I lost one of my best mates about two weeks ago due to suicide. So this today goes out to you, brother. Fly high, Rashawn. And anyone else that's struggling, just know to reach out. I know it's hard, but it could save your life. Thank you so much, Jake. Everybody give it up for Jake!